Hi guys, my name is Bill and I'm going to be going over the rest of the Redbook setting up procedures. First thing I want to point out is you can actually add your logo here. That's just as simple as going up to insert, clicking on insert, and then when the information comes down you can put in a picture of your logo and then you can size it if it comes out too big and size it and put it right there. Once I have all this done I can move on to setting up the actual monthly information. Start with January. We'll say we're setting this up for next year. And as you can see, it'll tell you what the day of the week is. Let's say that we're going to start vending on Friday the 5th. The sky temperature precipitation just gives you reminders of what was going on that particular day. I usually put the actual temperature, what the weather felt like, and if we had any rain or not. And usually it will be a very clear day that time of the year in Florida. The address of the event is whatever you need to know or need to write down to remind yourself where you were. Like a street, a cross street, a physical address if you're doing a specific event that you don't normally do all the time. And then just write down whatever information you need to help you remember what happened on that particular day. These cells will expand as you write in information and you can put in whatever you want just to help you to remember what goes on. Normally I put things such as how the traffic flow was going that day, if it was backed up, if there were a lot of birthday parties when I vend at parks. I sometimes will vend at a boat ramp and I just note the traffic of the boats going in and out. Whatever you need to help you to remember what went on that day as you're reviewing your records. And once you got it all in, as you can see that one expanded to cover all the gibberish that I put in. You want to go over here to your sales tax. This is an after the fact thing. Gross sales plus taxes. This is where you're going to list at the end of the day how much you did in sales. So let's say that I did $175. Populates my sales taxes that I have to pay to the state of Florida and the county. Tells me what my net sales is because it removes the taxes from the gross sales. And the, right now it's telling me I got $575 in cash. Now if you take credit cards, you're going to enter in whatever your credit cards were for that day. And then up here you want to put in whatever your credit card fees are. So if you have Square for instance, and your rate is 2.75, you put that in up there and it's going to, let's say I did $150 in credit cards. It's going to tell me that I'm losing $4.13 in the credit card fees out of that 150. So operationally I have $533 I can work with for that day. Now over here under the fixed cost, this is where you're going to enter in information based on your fixed cost. A fixed cost is one that whether you're open or closed never ever changes. So for instance your telephone. Your telephone, if you use a cell phone especially to do the uh, credit cards with, whether you're open or closed, you're still paying that cell phone fee. Commissary fee, you can either put that in as uh, an each time visit if you pay by the hour, or you can put it in as a monthly fee since I pay mine by the month. I will put in my monthly fee. But either way, the numbers end up being the same. Location fee, if you have to rent your spot, for instance, it's where you want to put in the rental. You want to break down your insurance by month. To whatever it costs. Any license fees, again, break it down by month. And mine costs me roughly $23 a year, or $23 a month rather, to get everything licensed and all the permits and everything that just gets me open. Bank fees, I have a straight 10 bucks a month bank fee. So now every time that I vend, as you can see right here, it will divide whatever I put in as a monthly fee by the number of days I'm open. So right now, since I've only told it I've been open one day, it has taken that entirely monthly fee. Because I don't know what the future is going to hold. It could rain the whole rest of the month, and that will be my only sales for the month. But if I open a second time, then it's going to redivide those and change them. Have an opening inventory. I typically try to not vend uh, in December, or if I do vend in December, it's very little. 
So basically when I open in January, I have no inventory as an opening inventory or a carryover inventory. So that means I've got to buy everything. So let's say that I buy $280 worth of stuff to get me going for that day. Gasoline is of course transportation related or if you run a generator that's where you'd also put your gasoline and I usually put in 15 to 20 dollars at a time. Propane, let's just say I use one tank or bought one tank. Cleaning supplies are different than food and paper. Food and paper is what goes to a guest. That is something the guest is going to have handed to them either in napkins or the boats or the paper bags is basically what it takes to get the guest going. Cleaning supplies on the other hand are things that I need to clean up the cart in the pots and pans. So it's going to be all the soaps, paper towels, hand soap, uh, polishes, anything that I need that the guest doesn't care if I've got or not. Doesn't help me to sell anything. It just helps me to keep my cart clean. So if I buy a broom to brush the uh, parking lot with, all that goes into cleaning. And I try to buy cleaning supplies once a month. And then I have no other cleaning supplies the rest of the month. And I try to make that amount last. And since I've been doing this for such a long time, I know exactly how much stuff to buy. Under marketing, that's if you spend money specifically to buy banners or to uh, get on the radio or you place a newspaper ad or you place an internet ad or if you place an ad on Facebook, you place an ad anywhere that costs you money, that's your marketing. And I usually spend about $19 a month. And then I've got a category there that's blank uh, for you to add in whatever topic you need to. And you can label it and all the information will carry over all the different charts and everything that I've got. All right, under the ending inventory, if you want to see what your food cost was for that particular day, then you take an inventory, you enter it in here. And let's say that I had $125 left over. That's going to tell me that my food cost was 28%. Now, of course, as I start adding in more expenditures and more sales, then it's not going to give me a daily food cost, but I can get a running month-to-date food cost by entering in an inventory ending inventory there. And this gives you a breakdown of the percentages of each thing that you spent. And at this point, after one day, I have lost $95. And that's because I have paid all of these expenses for the month, even though I've still got plenty of month left to go. So let's go back here and do just a couple more days worth of sales. Just so you can see how the sheet actually works. Let's go do Let's see, that's a Saturday. Saturdays are typically busier, still in January though. And then let's say Sunday we did about 300. 300 may not sound like a lot and some of you guys may not even open for 300 and that's perfectly all right. I prefer to start building up my cash and only stay open about three hours. So $100 an hour in sales is not completely horrible. As long as I can do 300, I'm building up my cash because I know as I get into February and definitely into March, I got spring breakers and I need cash to turn that into an inventory. So even though I'm not making a ton of profit, I know that I'm building up my cash reserve so I can buy the inventory I need without having to basically loan my business personal money. And that's why I don't mind being open for a $300 day in January. Come June or July, a $300 day is a horrible day. And I would not be open if I couldn't do more than 300 in June or July. And as you can see now, the chart has readjusted my fees and everything and broken it down because I've now been open three days as opposed to one. Go over here. I definitely have had to buy some food. I'll just pop in a couple of numbers here. Probably didn't buy any more gasoline. Maybe had to buy a propane there. But like I said, I try to do cleaning once a month and I try to do the marketing just once a month. So we'll say that any inventory is the same. What does that give us? A 28% food cost running. But now I've made $556 on uh, 1471 dollars Not bad. So how does that look over here? Let's look at the charts real quick. That gives me my charts.
Of course, they don't make a lot of sense because I've only got one day there. Now, a profit and loss, as you can see, it has no opening inventory because I didn't have one. It has no ending inventory because what it's looking for, this will be an annual profit and loss. It's looking for my December inventory, ending inventory. So if you're wanting to do this throughout the year, then just take your ending inventory, which is 125.50, and pop that in there. And then for your profit and loss statement, you had a 46% profit, which is not bad. It'll get better as you're open more days, because remember I'm taking the full brunt of these guys and having only been open three days. So it gives you a profit of $679.88. Not bad, not bad. Now I know you're going, well, how does how do you have 600 when over here you only had 500? Notice that's taxable income. The reason that this is showing me with a bigger amount there is because some of that money is tied up in inventory. All right, so that is that set up. Now I'm going to show you one other one that's actually completely filled out from start to finish. All right, let's go to my spreadsheet that was set up for 2016 as an example. This particular sheet, I've got my logo already built in. This is an older sheet, so it doesn't have a little uh, clicking there so I can change the quote, but the quote does change as I do computations. So let's look at the charts that I had set up. This one is an comparing your net sales versus your income. And basically you want yours to look similar to this. You can see the gap gets a little bit wider there. And the reason being is I'm building up my inventory because I know that June, July, and early in August I need to have inventory, so I'm building it up slowly. Buying a little bit of paper more frequently, and then food that will last a while, I'm building that up slowly. So that's why the gap increases. Now here on the flip side, as I'm coming out of my season, you can see the gap decreases. Where I'm getting closer to buying, or I have, I'm getting closer in income to what I have in net sales. And that's what you want. You want it to be as close as possible. Over here, you can see two different graphs that show you food purchases versus your actual food cost. Food purchases is the blue line, and that shows you how much money you just gone to the store and spent. Whereas the orangish line shows you what you actually used in food cost because it is deducting your ending inventory. Now, ideally, you want it to be you want your food cost to be lower than your purchases or nearly identical. You don't want to see this right here where your food cost is actually higher than your purchases. That tells you that you've got a food problem. There's a waste problem there. All right, and we're back to the original blank 2017 red book. You guys can download it. It's in the description below. There's no cost. You can email me with any questions you've got. I'll also give you my phone number if you need that when you email me because I want to help you to be successful. And I'm not going to charge you for the help, and I'm not going to charge you for this or any of the other spreadsheets that I give out, because I think that as a small business, you need all the help you can get. Hopefully, I can help you develop it into a big, big business. And at that point, if you want to pay me some money because I've helped you, then feel free. But right now, the important thing is to get you going, to get you profitable, and to get you successful. And you can't do that with somebody trying to gouge you for every nickel and dime that they can. I want to help you. No cost. So I thank you guys so much for watching, and I got more training coming up. We'll see you guys next time.